Brothers and sisters, Brother John Watchman for that great day. I'm back. Uh, it's been a little bit of a, a trip here, so to speak, at my computer. And thank God for the brothers and sisters that have helped me out to, to get this this far. Um, I've got a... Don't, this is my first video doing with the new stuff, so I hope it comes out correctly and right. But, so here's what I've got. Brother uh, Ronnie, who is on the line right now with me, so he he's excited, but this is the way we have to do this right now, so he's on the line. So if you hear him, you might you might hear him if he talks. But, um, so what I... What I received was a an email. It's from Brother Ronnie, and he tells me he tells just me he just ago. prayed. What was that, Brother Ronnie? Just moments ago, I said. Moments ago, ago. this is this is ago. literally, and I've been having a terrible day, and I'm like, just keep me in prayer because I'm going to the uh, not the hospital, but the doctor to see the doctor tomorrow, and not doing well as far as my physical strength is like you know i think we're all feeling that way though i don't think there's anything out of the ordinary uh the way we all feel so you know no energy waiting on the lord the king of the the king of the king of kings is coming that's all i know but where do you get a load of this all right so let me begin with what he said so he goes brother just prayed and we're speaking to the Lord about how we are all in in this zone, this protective zone, question mark. And I then understood that the Lord told us in Scripture that we are not subject to wrath nor the hour of temptation. Then this came. It's a, in the form of a question. Are there members of the church born-again believers in Iran? Answer, yes, of course. <laughs> if we are not subject to wrath as the body of Christ, then why would the body of Christ in Iran, Persia, ancient Persia, be subject to wrath when Israel strikes? They too are of the of Christ's body, so you know what that means, right, brother? He says, <laughs> he says, wow, and I'm like, I didn't quite get all of the bottom. You know what that means? And I'm like, what does it mean, right? So we're talking on the phone. And he he said, wow, I, I didn't say wow yet. We're talking on the phone. He shares this with me. He shares this article. The first article. Here's the article. It was it was uh, released five hours ago. And it's Iran's top security official in the UAE to seek stronger ties. And I'll read a little bit. Dubai, Reuters. Iran's top security official held high-level talks in the, Ar in the United Arab Emirates on Thursday. That's today. As Tehran seeks greater outreach to Gulf states amid mounting tensions with the West over the country's nuclear work and its and its done uh, and its drone sales to Russia, big deal. Russia does you know the drone sales. It's not about the drone sales. It's more about the nuclear, isn't it? So the visit by Iran's Supreme National Security uh, Council. Uh, Secretary Ali Shamkin, whatever his name is, comes days after Tehran and Riyadh reached uh, reached a China-facilitated deal to be to reestablish relations and reopen embassies within two months after years of hostility. Within two months. Where's too much put us? I think uh, we're in March, April, May. Oh, that's interesting. There's a, a reason I said that was because May is a thing going to happen. So I won't even go into that because this is all about what this is suggesting. Considering the, su the suitable platforms that have been created since a year ago for the development of relations between Iran and the UAE, I see this trip as a new stage for political, economic, and security relations," said Shami, the, the, this, this security guy from uh, 
Abdul, Abdul Dhabi. Read that again. Read that last sentence again. All right. Consider considering the suitable platforms that have been created since a year ago for the development of relations between Iran and the UAE one year ago, huh? I see this trip as a new stage for political, economic, and security relations. Security. Security. So there's the key word is security. Um, the next thing is the UAE downgraded its diplomatic ties with Iran after Riyadh severed its ties with Tehran in 2016 following the, st the storming of the Saudi embassy in the Islamic Republic by hardline protesters over Riyadh's execution of a prominent Shiite cleric. And it goes on. After the years of uh, animosity and on, on different sides of geopolitical uh, rivalries, the UAE started reemerging with Tehran in 2019. If result, it resulted in upgraded diplomatic ties last year between Iran and the UAE, which has business and trade ties with Tehran stretching back more than a century, with Dubai uh, Emirate long being one of Iran's main links to the outside world. Growing worries about warning, uh, warming relations between Israel and its former Arab foes, including uh, normalization agreements between Israel and some Arab nations known as the Abraham Accords have pushed Tehran's clerical rulers to pursue regional detente. Now right? stop right there. And, um, I want everybody to know that these articles, I did not find these articles until I was talking to Brother John on the phone. So the first article I found is when I called him and I sent that to him right away. And then I, while I was on the phone with Brother John, I found these two other articles. Now I want you all to think about something for a second. Uh, we just read that word security. It's no secret that Iran and the world knows that Israel is about to strike Iran. So they've actively engaged in seeking to tighten up their relationships with their Arab foes on a uh, smoke screen, if you will, or a delusion or a deception. You call it what you want because we know that they're deceptive, right? Right. So all of a sudden now they're going to get hit, so they're trying to tie up the shores with all their Arab foes all of a sudden, and they're screaming peace and safety all of a sudden. Um, and it's also no secret that the mountains that are going to have to be hit have to be breached by either a nuclear weapon or a tactical nuclear weapon because these bunker buster uh, weapons are not going to work. And that comes by a lot of brothers and sisters out there, including one who uh, from the Middle East, you know, everybody knows Amir Sarfati, so uh, he even says that bunker busters are not going to get it done. So go ahead, John, and then, then we found the other two articles. Uh -huh. um, this is just amazing. All right, so I'll just at, at this time interject this, and I'll say it again afterwards. But First Thessalonians five three: For when they shall say, "Peace and safety," then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. I just got chills. Wow. It's just me yeah, I've got Holy Ghost goosebumps. Oh all my over. gosh, goosebumps galore. Now, let me go back to the article. And tensions between Iran and the West have mounted over Tehran's nuclear activity and its its supply of drones, of course, for Russia's war in Ukraine, as well as Islamic Republic clampdown on months of anti government protests, Tehran denies selling drones. Moscow, uh, to Moscow for the use of the Ukraine war, Islamic Republic arch foes, Israel. Uh, uh, the Islamic Republic's arch foe, Israel, has threatened to carry out military attacks 
if world powers fail to salvage Iran's 2015 nuclear pact, which is that uh, thing that Obama came up with, you know, the, um, what was the name of it? I can't remember. Anyway, indirect talks between Tehran and Washington have stalled since September. Uh, then U.S. President Donald Trump uh, reneged on the accord in 2018 and reimposed U.S. sanctions in response. Tehran breached the deal in several ways, including by rebuilding stocks of enriched uranium. Got anything to add to that, brother? Brother, yeah, just, just tell the audience how long ago that this article just came out. Five hours ago. Five hours ago. For Reuters, right? Reuters, yeah. Reuters? Yeah. All right, you can move to the second and third one. All right, second article. The UN nuclear watchdog chief, uh, nuclear watchdog chief cites great expectation in talks with Iran. This was from 4th of March. Reuters, the head of the International Atomic Energy Agency said on Saturday, talks are go ongoing with Iran on two sets of important matters, including the science sector and there was great expectation about the process. Now, the science sector, se sector is likely dealing with the nuclear thing, okay? So, uh, Rafael Gra Grassi began meetings in Tehran on Friday that diplomats said were meant to push Iran to, to, to cooperate with the IAEA, which is the nuclear watchdog. Investigation into uranium traces found at under uh, at undeclared sites that had been in, enriched close to nuclear weapons grade, and so I'm not going to read any further on that, but I'm going to go to the next one. I think I already read it though. No, no, that was it. Let's see. Oh, I got two of the same. Um, yeah, there's another one that says IAEA. IAEA had Iran for nuclear talks. Yeah, Iran for, yeah, that. visits Iran for nuclear talks. At any rate, the bottom line and the reason for this video that is really so incredible is that, and it's going to be, of course, you read it in the title, but here it goes. What Ronnie wrote in the email is. Are there members of the church, the, the body of Christ in Iran, in Tehran, in ancient Persia, okay? It, there, we know for a fact they are. We've heard all the stories of people coming to Christ in droves. Um, there's a great underground movement in Iran. People have been saved and, and filled with the Spirit, and they have this energy that, that, that is, you know, it's a living God that's, that's moving over in Iran. And, you know, Jesus is showing up to these really staunch Islamic families that have been Islamic forever, and, and it's knocking on the door, and they're opening the door and seeing Jesus there, and they're converting. So, <clears throat> what we're seeing now, in, in what I just read, if these people are part of the body of Christ, they are, no doubt about it, and we're not appointed to wrath, to God's wrath, then, and because it used to be that the they could be anybody, right? Because in general, it could be the world. When they, when the United Nations says it, you know, when France says it, when everyone Israel in the world. Says it. Right. Everyone's been saying it. But who are really the they, looking at it like, like under this microscope here, Israel or Jacob, right? That's back in the land. That is, that is saying that they have to do something about Iran. Iran is sending its agents and its its uh, uh, you know uh, diplomats diplomats to the different areas of Saudi Arabia and trying to get as much uh, support for their case as they can. But we know doesn't matter because there's going to be a time where Isaiah 17.1 comes into play, and we know who's over in Syria, in Damascus. It's all Iran, right? Iran is 
is right in that area. So this hit that's got to happen to take out these four little nuclear plant, the the Ish, Ishtar, or whatever. There's a different a bunch of six of them, six nuclear plants. Um, it's going to happen by what what we know now is modern Israel, but they've been brought back into the land for such a time as this, and we're seeing what's going on in the rest of the world, and so we're very near to when they, and who are they, say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. It seems like Iran is the pivotal point of when they say peace and safety, then Israel hits. So I think we're watching <laughs> all this diplomatic move. And of course, Russia's in with, with Iran and Turkey's in with Iran. So expect to see in the very, very near future, because I, Israel's on the night, on the verge, on the, the eve, whether it's tonight or tomorrow night or the next night or next week, Israel is on the eve of, of doing something about Iran. But between that time and now, it seems like Iran will be starting to say, what? Peace and safety. It's just, and then... Let me, let me, let me throw something else in, into, the, into the ring here. That would preserve Gog Magog, and that would give them an additional hook, wouldn't it? Because if Gog Magog is destroyed, then they can't come in to attack Israel. But if they're not attacked, and Iran is attacked, Gog Magog has the open door. It, it's, that's the hook. It's the hooks. First hook being Iran, and I and and Russia coming to its rescue, if it would. Perhaps. Right? You know, because. Iran is giving weapons, you know, to the Ukraine, you know, to Russia for, so it, <laughs> the kings of the East are involved also, you got China. So I just, I just find it very interesting that who are the they? Could Iran be the they? When they, when Iran says peace and safety, it's sudden destruction. So, and it's a deceptive, it's a deceptive, very deceptive cry. Very deceptive. It's not, there is no peace, right? They say peace, 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 but there is no peace. So, Amen. with that, I'm going to let you go, brother. And uh, God bless you all, brothers and sisters. I'm going to get a blast on the show far because I think that we are that near that we're going to be hearing this thing any minute. Thank you for that info. Um, Amen. And brothers and sisters. Glad we could do it. We get it out. Well, see you Praise soon. God. Praise God. All God's glory. Nothing to do with me. Nothing. Amen. Nothing to do with Brother John. Amen. It's all God's glory. It's God be the glory. Amen.